God, today as we continue to work through our unique sermon series, help us just today to reflect on the image. A lot of times that becomes the image of us, God, but we know that you have a totally different plan when it comes to what we look like and what our true value is worth, especially in your eyes. So help us to do that, God. Help us to fight some of the things of our culture that tell us the opposite, that tell us lies really about ourselves. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So two tiny words to start today. Athletic fit. Now, when I hear these words, you might think, well, I kind of like sports, I like athletes, so maybe this would be fine. Maybe this is something that I would enjoy. Absolutely not. See, a few years ago, whenever I would go clothes shopping, life was easy. See, I mean, I'm a guy. It's not really hard. You find your size, you find something, you pick it off the shelf, away you go. So a couple years ago, I was shopping, and I found a shirt that I really liked. It was in my size, everything seemed right, it was on sale, just a t-shirt, I'm not even going to bother trying it on. I threw it in the cart, and on my way, I went. So a few days later, of course, I had to try on, I was going to wear my new shirt. Now, I, of course, had committed to this, I had ripped off all the tags, I was ready to wear it because it's a t-shirt, certainly it's going to fit. Now, as I put it over my head, it was a little bit snug. Now, I have a big head, so I didn't really think too much of it. So I pulled it on, pulled it all the way down, and then I realized something was off. It was tight, uncomfortably tight. I double-checked the size. Yep, that was correct. What was the deal? And I noticed two little words on the shirt. Athletic fit. See, this was a different cut of shirt than what I was used to. See, athletic fit is cut a little closer to the body. They're made of stretchable material. And I promise you, being a mid-30s-something dad, the member of our pastoral staff who does not run for fun, I was not looking for snug. I was looking for comfortable. My purchase was a complete bust. Now, I did what I usually do when things don't go my way. I complained to my wife. On this subject, she was not having it. She simply replied, welcome to my world. See, what I did not know is that for women's clothes, it has been like this as long as my wife could remember. She'd go to one store and it'd be this size. She'd go to another store and it'd be this size. Then there's the junior section and the women's section and all these different things. And she would go to four different stores and have four different size shirts that actually fit. She assured me that women have basically always been dealing with this and finally men were joining the party. So correctly, I did not get a whole lot of sympathy on that day. But there I was, in my athletic fit shirt, being too tight, reeling and saying, I was never going to wear this thing again, and looking at that unflattering portrait of myself in the mirror. Athletic fit was not for me. And on this day, I made the mistake that many of us do when we look at ourselves. We gauge our body image based on the visual we see. See, and what this does is raise a bigger question of where does the value of our bodies come from? See, we generally always associate it with our physical appearance. And what can this do? This can leave us feeling like I did that day, uncomfortable and disappointed. See, I remember growing up, there was two distinct things that I struggled with when it came about my appearance. See, the first was when I was a junior and senior high, I had acne. Now, I'm not just talking about a few zits here and there. I am talking about it was bad. I would look in the mirror, and instead of seeing my reflection, I would intuitively count how many zits I had at that particular time. And I had tried everything. I did all the treatment plans, the proactives, the things, all the stuff. Nothing seemed to help. It got so bad when I got to college, I saw a nice picture of myself. Well, at that time, this cool new thing, Microsoft Paint, existed, and I saw the picture, and I literally touched up my own picture to cover up my acne. My wife saw that, and she's like, you, you used Microsoft Paint, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. Now, the second thing I struggled with was my height. See, out of all the sports, I played them all when I was a kid. I made the decision to say, I'm going to quit football, I'm going to quit baseball, and I'm going to focus on basketball. Basketball was my favorite sport. I quit the other ones early. It was also at that point when I quit the other sports, I also quit growing. I topped out at 5'10 on a very good, positive day. 
Now, the hard thing with both of these physical factors about myself is there was nothing I could do to change them. I mean, I couldn't change the way my skin related to oil. I certainly couldn't make myself taller. But yet, this did not stop me from looking in the mirror and wishing something was different. And the truth is, all of us have probably been there. We've looked at the mirror, and there's something we wish we could change. That wrinkle go away, or, or that one spot that we're just not happy with, or, you know, some of those people, I have my good side, get, my, get this, not, not this side of the picture. What this does is this chips away at our self-worth. We look at ourselves, and we see our faults and our imperfections. See, our problem with image, though, is not a new one. If this was a Disney sermon, we could say this is a tale as old as time. So we go all the way back to Genesis 3, and we look after the creation of the world. God makes this beautiful, perfect world. He takes Adam and Eve. He puts them in the garden. What do Adam and Eve do? They eat from the forbidden tree. Then, what do they do next? What is the next thing Adam and Eve do after they fall into sin? Genesis 3, verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, And they realized they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So from the very beginning of time, humans have struggled with the image of themselves. Instead of seeing God in themselves, Adam and Eve saw their sin. They realized they were naked, they were ashamed, and they made coverings. They hid. Here we are, thousands of years later, And I believe we are responding similarly in our lives. First, to help our image, what do we do? We try covering ourselves. We try hiding our image and finding something else that we are happy with. Now, I believe as humans this manifests itself in a number of different ways. So as of 2019, our country boasts a cosmetic industry that brought in $49.2 billion dollars. The average American woman spends $115 a month on makeup and beauty treatments and almost $1,400 a year. These products are meant to accentuate your good characteristics or help edit those things that maybe you don't enjoy as much. We also cover ourselves, of course, in clothes. This is obvious since Adam and Eve, we've always basically done that, but our fascination and obsession with clothing has continued to grow. Now, a large part of this is branding. You can enter a store, you can see two sweatshirts. They're made of the same material, same color, same style, but the price tag is different. One shirt is $20 more than the other. Why? It's about the logo, that logo that is included with the shirt. And part of that logo is who else is wearing it. An entire industry exists of celebrities and athletes endorsing products. Next week, we will be bombarded with the Super Bowl, and we'll see all those new ads that tell us what we need to wear and how we should look. An example of this is Under Armour. See, during 2019, that company spent $374 million on advertising alone. This is done to help us realize, as the consumer, that we need that logo or that particular brand on us. And if covering ourselves up wasn't enough, what do we do? We go further. To help our image, we change ourselves. Now, for people, this usually goes into one of two categories. Either we change what we put in our bodies, generally through dieting, or we fix our bodies. Now, with dieting, maybe we cut out sweets, maybe we take up, we bulk up veggies, we figure out what kale exactly is. We believe we can improve our image if we just eat right. Now, the other way to fix ourselves is to work out. Maybe we decide to do that couch to 5K. We take up a hobby that gets us more active. Now, neither of these things, don't hear me wrong, they are not bad. If you're a person who made a New Year's resolution last January, and it's February and you're still rocking it, keep going. These things can be taken to extremes. So when does focusing on the image of ourselves become a problem? When we see that pursuit of perfection and improvement through diet or exercise, more important than seeing our creator in us. Because the truth is, whether we see ourselves in the mirror and we only see our faults, or we look in the mirror and we see that pursuit of a more perfect body, we are focusing on ourselves. Our focus is sinful. We're turning in to ourselves instead of turning out. We are failing to see the creation that God made in us. 
So what spurs us on? Why do we do this? Why do we fall in this? Well, we are people of comparison. We try covering and changing ourselves because we live in a world of comparison. See, we don't just look in mirrors. We also look out. We look out at those around us, and we compare ourselves to other people. What do we usually end up finding? We don't usually end up finding contentment in ourselves because there's always someone taller, more attractive, better looking than us, and we're left feeling like we don't measure up. We play the sinful comparison game that we are never going to win. And when we do this, we also forget a really important quality and truth. Heredity, your genes. As frustrated as I might have been that I only grew to five foot ten, my parents, not tall people. My grandparents, again, not tall people. I could not change the genes that I was given. So what do we do? Where do we turn? When we have this image crisis, what we need to do is turn to Christ, not to ourselves. We need to try restructuring the image of ourselves in a different lens, in a different filter. We need to try casting aside what our culture is telling us and focus instead on what does God say. See, as we look at our image, we go back to Genesis again. We go back to creation. Because in Genesis 1.27, it says this. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. See, unlike the rest of God's whole creation, we are special. We are set apart. Humans are the only part of God's creation that bear his unique image. This is a big deal. Now, while we're made in the image of God, we might look around and we realize we're all different. We're all unique. See, this is where the words of this, really the theme of our whole sermon series, Psalm 139, come into play. It says this, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. As frustrated as we might be in our own bodies, our bodies are not an accident. God created us. It's amazing you think of the world we live in, how many things get mass produced. Machines can make exactly the same thing to look exactly the same way over and over and over again. That's easy. That's mass production. That isn't what God does with us. God intricately, carefully, wonderfully creates each and every one of us. And our body image is so much more than outward appearance. It's also what's on the inside too. I'm not talking about our organs or our muscles but what Paul talks about in our scripture today from 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 19 says this, So do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? See, in this scripture and some other places in the Bible, our bodies are described as a temple. Now, that makes our bodies seem a little bit more important than what our culture tells us they are. That isn't just something we cover up or change. Our bodies are a temple. But the question is, what exactly does that mean? What is a temple and what is that definition? So if we look, the primary use of a temple in the Bible was for worship. A temple is a place where people gather to be in the presence of God. And a temple is a place where God would dwell. See, we can see in Matthew 21 also what happens if anything would go wrong. Like, if people would desecrate or do something wrong with the temple, this is what happens. So Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. See, the temple in the Bible was meant to be a holy place. Now we see in 1 Corinthians that our bodies are to be a temple. Which means what? We put the two and two together. Our bodies are a place of worship and a place that God dwells. Think about how different of a definition that is than what our culture tells us. See, our bodies are holy, not because of what we do and what we make out of our bodies, but instead because the Holy Spirit dwells inside us. When we demean ourselves and we look and we see our imperfections and our flaws, we sin. We stop seeing God. And when we are on the opposite end of the spectrum, when we think too highly of ourselves, we start worshiping our own bodies, we also sin. We stop seeing God. 
in both those scenarios, we are attributing our bodily worth to ourselves. It relies upon us. Whether we are on either end of the spectrum, we are missing the most important part. Our body's worth does not come from our outward appearance, but who is within us. We see this very eloquently put in our scripture today from 1 Samuel. When David was chosen as king, all his brothers come first. All of them are bigger, stronger, more handsome than he is. Yet none of them are chosen to be the next king. They're all passed over. David is chosen. Why? 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. See, our body image is also not important, not because the cost we spend on it, whether that's cosmetics or clothes, but because of a different cost associated with it. See, that verse in 1 Corinthians then continues. You are not your own. Verse 20. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. For our bodies to be redeemed and saved, a price had to be paid. That price and that cost was Jesus. Jesus Christ sacrificed his body so that someday our bodies could be re reunited with our souls with Christ in heaven. And Christ's sacrifice was not dependent upon our appearance, inwardly or outwardly. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Sinful on the inside and the outside. So, you think of how many times we think we must look a certain way or do a certain thing or wear a certain thing of clothing, but in the eyes of God, it does not matter. The truth is, in our time here on earth, we're going to continue to struggle with our body image and our body. Our struggle with our earthly body will continue because why? We're sinful. Our bodies are mortal. They break. But whatever that thing we struggle with is, we cannot equate that thing to our value. If you're one of those good people who fills out all the sermon notes, that, that's great. I'm glad you do that. Second to the last sermon note says this does not equal value. That's for you to fill out. I didn't put the answer up there because to all of us, we all have a different thing that we struggle with when it comes to our image. But whatever that thing is you struggle with, it does not equal your value. See, what we need to do is we need to change our body image to not being about what we see, but instead about being what Christ sees and works in each one of us. See, when we do that, the value of our body cannot change because Christ is the basis of the value that we have. We are made in the image of God. We are set apart. Our bodies are a temple not because of us, but because God dwells inside each and every one of us. Finally, Christ saw us as valuable enough. We were important enough, despite of what we think of our own bodies, that Jesus gave his body on the cross so that we may have life. That's where our value comes from when we look at our bodies. It's what Christ has done for us. Amen.